commandos, force users, and various nerf herders. Welcome back to the Book of Flynn. This is Vinzer, your stern but fair captain. So this week, we're going to hit up the crew lounge with Reyna, Merritt, and Cryas and talk about the first two episodes of Kenobi. The spoilers were lifted as of this writing by the official Star Wars accounts, so by the time this is out, whether you've seen the show or not, the new Princess Leia is going to be in the spotlight. And right on cue, the shittier part of the fan base has taken to Twitter, complained about the way she's been written, proving these quote-unquote fans never fucking understood Leia at all. Anyway, fuck those guys, get back onto your bridges. This show is really going to tie the prequel and classic eras together, and it's super exciting, especially for an 80s kid like me that's been waiting for a long time. So let's hit it. Crew lounge time. What up? Lord Cryus, how are you? Oh, yes, Lord Finza. I am well this evening. <laughs> doctor, doctor. And Lady Merida, how goes it? Very warm in my house right now. Is it? Yeah. Open your window. Is it, the, oh, what? Oh, my God. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> Cryus goes out window. <laughs> <laughs> we were culking. <laughs> Listen, I don't need to hear what you're doing in the private. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, yes, yeah, so it's that was done, and then it's, it's pretty much done. Awesome. That's it. Get our lives back. It'll be nice. <laughs> yeah. That yeah, looks good. Damn well, better be. <laughs> really suck if I hated it after it was it's good. Today, they announced that my office, I only have to go to the office three days a week instead of four days a week. So oh, that's something. Very, exci very exciting. I think they felt bad for the price of gas, honestly. Seriously, we're all going to be fucking getting horses before you know it. Be fucking right? cheaper. I think it's, uh, that's the thing. If you've got a place to put a horse, it's probably cheaper. <laughs> Fuck it, I'll put it in the house. I don't care. <laughs> I'm not even sure, like, boarding the horse. It might actually even be cheaper at this point. I don't know. It's cheaper just rent the barn, live in it. Honestly, just you, the horse. I think we're on to something here. If you, if you can find a barn. I mean, those are probably already gone, too. We're, we need the Amish. We need a barn in a day. <laughs> we'll do it, English. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my dad has... Uh, a, a tool that they used to actually put up the beams in the barns okay. that the Amish did or the Mennonites did one of the barn raising groups of people and it's like this huge thing it's unbelievable but yeah they used to just like slam on them up so <laughs> I saw uh, it's like a fast sped up video of them raising the barn is fucking incredible yeah. and if there's any yeah. Amish listening to this then stop it what are you doing <laughs> it's like, I mean, maybe build some apartment buildings, I guess, honestly. <laughs> well, that was in a um, world according to Jeff Goldblum. There was a, a Amish like carpenter or something working there helping to make RVs. And, but he had like no interest in anything, you know, in the outer world. He just kind of came and did his job. I would be too curious and I would be one of those kids that did my Rom Sprunger thing or whatever and uh, never came back from. Yeah, for sure. I would have escaped early and joined the circus or something. Can you imagine that? You're an Amish guy. You're just going to work, and uh, the representative from the outside world you're suddenly exposed to is Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> he comes at you all gangly and happy and asking questions, and you're like, oh, my God. <laughs> Are they all like this? <laughs> Personally, I think I would, like, go out for Jeff Goldblum, but, you know. <laughs> I'd be shocked into incoherency, but I'd be delighted. <laughs> Hello, Lady Reyna. Hello. Is everyone uh, sufficiently absorbed all the news and trailers from Celebration? I hey. have not. I, I have not either. I have not watched. I saw a little tiny bit of, you know, the, the spoilery thing that would make me excited. Oh, the trailer they haven't actually released, but uh, certain details of... The Ahsoka. Yeah. I haven't yeah. seen it yet. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait, I think. I saw... I just saw the picture because Cryos was making sure that I knew. <laughs> of course. And then um, the stuff from Mandalorian. I saw he showed me a screenshot today from that. So. Yeah, season three is not even out and they've already said yes to season four. I just read today that Kathleen Kennedy said that uh, Lando series with Donald Glover is still in development. And I was like, yes. Be fun, I, I think. Because that could just be like a really different 
story to what a lot of it is, you know? Yeah. Like, it has potential. Like, I mean, that was like with the, the Han Solo movie, I was like the same kind of thing because I wanted to kind of see the little scum and villainy side of things, I guess. Yeah. So it was kind of cool. I actually still like the movie. Solo was a good movie. I don't care what anybody says. I love Solo. That was a fucking great Star Wars movie. Really good movie. If anyone thinks otherwise, they can come to Steelhaven for an ass kicking. Yep. <laughs> it was enjoyable. It was it was what it should be, actually. I mean, it would have been perfect for me had it been, you know, a zillion years ago and had have had a young Harrison Ford. <laughs> but it is what it is. Episode one of Kenobi. They're not using that many episode names in this one. This was just part one. So is it just me or is the recap they did telling the story was the best version of the prequels I've seen yet? It was very good, actually. I was like, well, that certainly lays it all out, doesn't it? <laughs> good background have, music, well cut. <laughs> I have that. There's two lines that say that they say in the prequel in the prequel sum up, and it uh, they actually contradict each other. It's just like you're supposed to, you know, he's the one that will bring balance to the force, and it was like you're supposed to destroy the Sith, not become them, and it's contradict each other because it's balance. You need evil. Well, it's well, not it's not just they, good. Right? Is they they just get so caught up in believing that that is how he's supposed to do it that they don't realize that yeah, he still brings balance to the force. That's what happens. But Yeah, because the Jedi were a strong and powerful, you know, base yeah, squad they, for the longest time. So balance would be bringing up evil to match the strength of the Jedi, and then it went a little far. They needed him to have Luke and Leia too, right? And then they had to balance each other out at the end. So it's it's like I just I was cry I didn't say I was actually talking to the TV at that point. Go and they didn't say how. That's they right. They did not say how. They just said he was gonna. If anything, it's still massively balanced in the favor of the Jedi. <laughs> Yep. Speaking of calling the herd, I can't believe what they started off with. Another perspective of Order 66. Man, they really love different perspectives of Order 66. Oh, this this one was brutal. I feel like it's just an easy way to play on everybody's heartstrings, right? Like you just get to watch children get mowed down by... by <laughs> well, you don't really. You get to watch implied children get mowed down. Yeah. Because it's really oh, far away. Too soon. I mean, it's always too soon, let's be honest. Do we know who the Jedi teacher was that we saw die? I think she had a name in the subtitles, but uh, it's not someone I've seen before. I'm willing to bet the young. The whole point of that was the, to draw attention to that some of those younglings will yes. end up being the Inquisitors. Yeah, there's there's a guarantee that the one that we see eventually, Nari or whatever, he guaranteed he's in there. Some like he was one of those. Was it? I can't remember if Rain if it was you or me that brought it up, but we were like, "Well, Order sixty six was, ha was happening." We were like, "Somewhere Grogu is going through this," and we were like, "Oh fuck!" Yeah, I said that to I, you, and you were like, "Why did you say that?" <laughs> <laughs> I was a bit worried he'd show up in like the background and I was mm. like, oh no, please no Grogu. Don't do that. Don't do that. No. Nope. They kept him out. It was smart. But yeah. Back to Tatooine. A bold familiar Tatooine. I, I assume this is Anchorhead that we're around. And uh, probably the Inquisitors show up and uh, we meet Reva and the Inquisitor. I don't know if we actually caught the Inquisitor's name or not, but. Uh, oh, fifth brother? No, no. The, yeah. uh, the main guy. Oh, the no, they just call him the Grand Inquisitor. Or yeah. yeah. How old would you say the third sister, Reva, is? Um, perhaps old enough to have been a young Jedi or even a youngling? Yeah. I yeah. So. It's been 10 years since the Purge, so late, late teens. Might probably. have been a Padawan. Yeah, maybe. She's certainly fucking driven and privy to some interesting information that we will get to shortly. But yeah, she's... Uh, She's winning me over a big time as a, a cool villain already. Like, she's quite dangerous. So it makes me wonder who is her, who is teaching her, who's training her? Because she's obviously very advanced, like, comparatively to some of the other ones. They seem to have more of, like, a minor control over it, but she seems very far along. Ader trains all the, um, Ader trains is. all the Inquisitors. Okay, that was my question, because I was just like, who is her Sith Lord or what have you? Like, who is her? Who's yes. training her? 
Technically, the Inquisitors get around the rule of two by being dark Jedi, not being Sith. It's technically how yeah. they're spinning, how this works. Yep. Okay, good to know. We go out to uh, the desert where Kenobi's got a job cutting up what looks like a sand manta, another new Tatooine monster we haven't seen yet. I don't think we have. Yeah, I hope uh, sun-cured uh, meat is in, it must be in high demand. It looks a lot like smoked salmon, only really Yeah, oddly big. enough. So it, is there no is there no concerns about refrigeration, food storage? <laughs> Raina was very concerned with what was left out overnight. <laughs> the carcass is just lying there in the sand and they just bring out hunks of it that they then carve into like neat little brick sized chunks. And so then, it's fine then? I, I guess. I was trying to figure out how his bosses let him steal a little sliver every day and nobody seems to notice. I was sure he was going to get caught, actually. That was going to be part of the something to drive more of the story. But it looks like it's just, it was between him not saying anything about that guy whose pay got cut mm -hmm. and, and that just happening. Kind of just was, I think, to demonstrate how very beat down he kind of was. He looks so haunted. So haunted. Yeah. yeah. This episode really took, had a lot of dead ends like it had a lot of things where you thought it was going to go down that road and then it just takes a left turn you're like oh, oh okay we're not doing that and there was just a lot of things that they could have used but they didn't and they went for a different entrance it was really it was really interesting the way they did that and it's stuff like you know that's got to come back like the jawa like you know that yeah. that's is the droid outside his cave is that his old astromech from his jedi starfighter is that him buried down there it looks like the same antenna that R2 uses on... It looks like the same Periscope style thing. We got a 3PO cameo. That was nice. Yeah. So my next question is about uh, Kenobi's cave. I was like, okay, uh, as we find out later, he does not have a ship. Or at least one he's bringing out of hiding. Um, so like after the ep episodes three, Bail or Ghana just dropped him off there. I don't know, with some camping supplies and no money. Like <laughs> he couldn't have given him something. All I want to know is how do people keep getting in and surprising him? Like, how is there a back door in the cave? Like, like first there's a Jawa, then Bale's there. Suddenly, and he's just like all the time. People are in his cave. It's for, yeah, really like, not very secure, is it? It's like, well, yeah, what are they going to steal? I suppose. Well, other than the thing from his his evaporators, <laughs> his parts from his own feeder. <laughs> they clean them as a courtesy. <laughs> <laughs> Cleaning's extra. Cross extra. I think he's cut himself off from the force. He also needed to wear yeah. a hat. I was really concerned he's, he wasn't wearing a hat. He's very unaware of his surroundings, which goes to show how cut off he is from it. Yep, very true. How about the um, the toy he got for Luke? Uh, uh, we've seen that toy before. Yeah, it's a T-16. Mm. Yeah, I do believe one Mr. Mark Hamill was playing with it in episode four. I don't know if it's the same one, but I thought that was a really cool throwback to the 70s. I did like the Grand Inquisitor's monologue about the Jedi Code being um, the Jedi hunt Jedi Jedi hunt themselves. That was good. Mm -hmm. uh, the code is an itch they can't scratch. I mm -hmm. actually liked the fact that she just then threw the knife at him to shut him up so that they could find the Jedi because she was just tired of his monologue. It's like, oh my god, just stop it. She and is like already my second favorite Disney villain. Ursula will always be number one. <laughs> but I all and technically she is the Disney villain, but I really like Reva. Like I, I actually, I, it's weird. I find myself being like, yeah, get it. And you're like, wait, no, 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 you're not supposed to, but get it. I think we're going to find out there's a reason she like that she has gone down this path. So I think she might become she a slightly sympathetic villain. Yeah, she has something. She has it in for him specifically. Yeah. Yeah, and she's very fond of Vader for a reason. So yeah, we get our first look at young Luke, at least from a distance, and he goes missing for twenty seconds, and the aunt and uncle panic. And uh, it was another seventies throwback of just Uncle Owen wandering around, going, "Luke, Luke, <laughs> Luke," <laughs> just fucking ignoring him. The Leia thing was a nice curveball, though. I don't think yes. anybody was expecting that at all. Oh, they got us so good with it. 
I mean, Star Wars fans that have like played Old Republic or know more canon uh, and supplemental info, we recognized Alderaan immediately. But we were talking about how if you're only kind of casually into Star Wars, you might like you'd see the planet and you you didn't know what you were in for. Whereas we were like, holy fuck, look what they just did. Well, other than maybe the end of Episode Three when Bale brings Leia to uh, the Queen, whose name I don't remember, uh, Bria, oh, I think, yeah. or Brianna. Um, mm-hmm. That's probably the first time we've seen like Alderaan in live action, not in a thousand million pieces. Yeah. I say not in pieces, yeah. Kenobi runs into Nari the Jedi in the desert, and he's, uh, I, found, I found Nari a little unconvincing. Uh, I, he didn't seem kind of desperate enough. He's like, please, you must help me. But the, th- the thing about that whole scene was Kenobi, he's just like, he's so different now. Like he's, he says, I'm not the man I was, and you and McGregor is fucking selling that. He's just broken. He's like, I can't help you. I think I think that scene was in there to set up that he's broken. And when he says no to Bale the first time, why it feels like it makes more sense. So Alderaan get a great look at it, and we meet uh, Little Miss Show Stealer, Princess Sassy Pants. She seems like young. But, like, do we know the age of the actual actress? Because she seems physically young for 10 i wasn't buying 10 that's just a weird little side note that i just weird quirk i just kind of noticed but i didn't see 10 like she i thought eight tops yeah because like the teeth and stuff i was like her the teeth haven't even she's not even at the right stage for tooth growth like it's weird she's been in a bunch of stuff like i'm looking at her imdb page right now Mm, how old is she 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 has credits as early as 2018, but she doesn't really have... There's no bio for her. Vivian Ly- Lyra Blair is an actress, and how is she a producer at age whatever, but okay. <laughs> and for Obi-Wan Kenobi, We Can Be Heroes and Bird Box. 2012. Okay. June 4th, 2012. Is her birthday. So she's 10. So she is 10. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but this would have been no. filmed... This would have been filmed a couple years ago, though. Oh, good yeah. Point. She, Probably last year, yeah. Last she won't year. be 10 until... Next week. Was she an author? The fuck? I love how Bale is like the one who's like, "Good job." Oh yeah, that's awesome. Like egging her on, egging Leia on, and she's like, mm, "Not bad." <laughs> he's like, he's like, "Nice guy, good dad." Bale. As soon as she shows up, he's like, "Anything good today?" He like he knows the mischief she's into. <laughs> I was quite charmed by Jimmy Smith's in this episode. It was fun to see him again. I like the new marketing toy that they've got. <laughs> oh Lola! Yes. Oh yeah. I like I like Lola. It's going to be like L01A or some dumb bullshit. I also wonder how long. I have not, because we just watched tonight, so I have not seen the internet's reaction. But I have to assume, because fanboys, that there was some level of upset that there was a girl stealing the show. Oh, they are angry they are so the neckbeards are in a furor over how all oh, you know how princess leia is ruined for them and but the internet's firing right back oh you never fucking understood her ever then no because it's like it was it was perfect that's what she would be like oh so spot on i mean i i have a like why i have a bit of like a question that i was thinking of um while i was watching it was it smart to take the daughter of a really strong force user and put her in a position to inherit an entire planet. Nobody knows she's a force user, not even her. No, but like Kenobi knows where she came from. Right. Oh, yeah. I see what you're saying. And put her, yeah. And put her in, like, gave her to, you know, uh, Bale and Bria and allowed her to basically br- bring her up in politics and then put her in a position to inherit a planet. Well, they knew. The Organas knew as well. Yeah. But the reality That's is... Leia, my point. <laughs> Leia was never... It's only been in the new ones that Leia ever was acknowledged to even have the Force. Anyway. I thought that she had it in the like the original ones. Like, I grew up realizing that she was just more innate about it. She's it never... She wasn't outright... It made sense, but she had never been acknowledged as having the force until the new ones, because then that caused a hole. But I mean, even her. with, like, she was an infant, right? When they made this decision. Newborn, yeah. And so they did that not knowing 
who she would grow up to be or if she was going to be a force user or anything like that. So just it just seems like a very interesting decision. My bigger thing is it seems like incredibly bad hiding to put her there and put Luke back on the planet. That's always been my like, what? What? With his real last name. Want? Like, seriously, yeah. no, right? no Luke Lars. I mean, <laughs> no. And then give him to what? the same family. Why, how, why is that's bad hiding? I saw some great memes about how Princess you know, Leia got put into a life of luxury from the get go. And it's like, what about the boy? <laughs> LOL. <laughs> Poverty on a dirt ball. It'll be good for him. He needs it. So this is a thing I didn't realize before, right? I thought that in the prequels that they tried to pass Leia off as their own blood daughter. Not that it was widely known that she was adopted. And it seems like everybody knows Leia included. Yeah. Again, bad hiding. Yep. Okay. If you pretend like, and I, I don't think that you're imagining that. I think that that was genuinely how it was portrayed. That they, everybody just thought she was the daughter, including because I mean, I, I feel like she would have had a lot more questions about her life if she knew she was adopted. That's first my first thought too. Like she would have been full of questions for sure. Right. Like. And also probably not gone around kissing strangers as much be just because or almost in case the brother thing was well, going to happen. You don't know. See, the, the thing I find with Star Wars is, is just that we as, you know, regular humans who live on Earth cannot really fathom the size of the galaxy. You know what I mean? Like, you would be hard pressed to find somebody on Earth, let alone Earth times 10,000 inhabited planets. You know what I mean? One thing that I don't know. this is this is my other objection that I have is that Star Wars accidentally gatekeeps its own fandom by not making it accessible like Marvel does. It doesn't announce where it is. It never tells you a planet. You rarely get somebody's name. There's no sort of introduction. You're literally dropped into the story and you get the impression that you're just inherently supposed to know what's going on. And then you basically just try to figure it out. So half the time I'm not even putting names and places together because there's been no association in any of it. So for the person who's not a diehard fan, it is that much more effort to get invested and to actually learn the Star Wars fandom. Tons of information about Star Wars all comes from the books and shit that go along with it or the action figures. Yeah. Like even in the old ones, I mean, it was it was questions in Star Wars Trivial Pursuit about what the names of the character, like the Imperial, like what was the name of the guy who says uh, Lord Vader has arrived in Jedi? They don't say his name in the movie at all. And I, I only know it because I read other books and shit. So you're absolutely right. Yeah, they don't really throw title cards up for planets. They just kind of include it in the dialogue and expect you to have remembered the dialogue from like five minutes ago. And I couldn't name that planet that they were on in the second episode. Not a sweet clue. Bayou, only because I wrote it down. It should have been Nar Shada, is what it should have been. Rogue One did it, and I liked it when I did that. Tokyo Cyberpunk. <laughs> I love Dayu. It was so cool. Getting back to Luke for a second, uh, Uncle Owen, uh, Joe Edgerton is so fucking good as Uncle Owen, but say what you will about Owen, man. He stepped up to take care of Luke. Like, I know he's very, you know, trying to shelter him and shit but like he's he him and veru man <laughs> they're the mvps slapping down with the whole yeah like train him like you did the last one. Oh, oh. what a mic drop and uh back to alderaan when leia escapes again and she's gets chased by kidnappers and Joni, i know you probably said the same <laughs> thing as me being a gen <laughs> xer <laughs> that motherfucking flea from the chili peppers and it was He's a uh, character called up. Vect, I think. I just, yeah. I just want to find out whoever the hell Star Wars taps to ch to film chase, like choreograph chase scenes, and just fire them because that was atrocious. <laughs> it was, yeah. But I mean, it's, it's a little kid kind of kid cute chase kind of things. So but yeah, you're hundred percent right, man. It was hard to watch. Like, like I get her using like the low branches and the like the V's through. Like that was cool. Like that would be things like a kid would do running through the forest away from people. But like, I feel like as an adult whose intent is to capture this child, 
uh, uh, a midriff height branch is not going to be the thing that stops you from chasing after her. I know. Like, come on. Sorry, did we ever find out what a glorag is? Bray, I said it was like raising a glorag for <laughs> for raising Leia, who very shortly afterwards said it's like living in a prison. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually an Easter egg. Yeah, like, it's stuff like this. A glorag is a creature that was referenced in Wanted by Kraken, Star Wars Adventure Journal number 10. <laughs> You haven't read that? Come on. <laughs> like, kind of fan. Warren Call, a notorious Quarren slaver, was a skilled writer on the Gloregs. So that is the only information they have about Gloregs. <laughs> Not That's the it. friendliest of creatures. Writers went to Wikipedia. <laughs> Jeez, they went deep cut for that one. They were like, all right, we got to screw them over. Let's find something. Okay, have y'all have heard of Jack Obeast? Is that oh, a thing? That was, I don't know. That's, I think that was a new one to me. That was, um, I'd rather be digested by a Jack Obeast Star Wars. There's pictures of this one, at least. It looks like a two headed Siberian tiger. Arctic, force sensitive, Arctic herd animals found in the tundras of icy planets in the outer rim. Yeah. Size of a bantha. Oh, it's a big kitty! I want one. <laughs> Oh no! Oh, this is gonna be a problem in D and D now, isn't it? <laughs> I, I'm gonna I'm gonna acquire one at some point. Oh my God. <laughs> it's a saber toothed tiger, but like mastodon as a bantha, and it's a Siberian tiger because it's black and white. It's so good. Kind of like that ferocious kitten of ours that just walked by in the background. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she gets kidnapped, and then the Captain Marvel pager goes off. Right, Bill. Bill calls for help. Kenobi's like, I can't do it. Leave me alone. But then fucking Bill just shows up anyway. Through the back door of the cave. Yeah. <laughs> also, what age do these kids go to university? I have a feeling Alderaan is very similar to Naboo and they get them into it very early because Padme as a queen was, Jesus, what was she, like 13 or something ridiculous like yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, we, yeah, like Christ said earlier, we were set up to believe Kenobi was going to say no because he's just been so not himself but uh he goes and digs up the, the saber and i was like oh my god anakin's is gonna be in there too and fucking sure enough yeah so nari is dead and just like it was pointed out in book of boba fett he wasn't strung up like he was hung with a noose he was just strung up with string because disney right i feel like that might have been different had it not been disney so Kenobi digs up the sabers, and uh, part two, we introduced to Dayu, which, as Cry said, is uh, very Nar Shaddaa. Like, I like Dayu a lot. I think that's a place uh, a Flynn could, could really enjoy themselves. I have a whole section here called Space Taken. So this is... <laughs> so go all Qui-Gon on them. <laughs> Kenobi's more like, I have a certain set of skills, but I don't want to use them. <laughs> How about the uh, Tamura cameo? That was cool. Mm. I I really liked Ewan's acting in that scene. Like he looks visibly conflicted. It was great. But throw some credits anyways. So uh, we were someone was theorizing that uh, they had two episodes of Mando and Book Effect because he was off filming clone stuff, and I'm beginning to see a little more credibility to that idea. I have a note here with uh, as soon as we saw the clone trooper, we saw the new one, the stormtroopers, and they went by, you know, shoving the people out of the way. And all I could think of is life of Brian. Bloody Romans. <laughs> the juxtaposition was quite nice. I was like, oh my gosh, there's a Jedi on die. You... No, nope, never mind. Never mind. I and... love Camille Najani. Najiani, I'm sorry. Um, he, he kills me. He, he is he so actually... good. Well, he used to be... Um, for a really, really, really long time, he did uh, X Files podcast. Oh no, oh, shit! Was a huge, 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 huge X Files fan, and I'm just looking at him because I can't remember what it was called, which is terrible. So yeah, so and that's why when they brought the X Files back, he actually did a, a role in that, which was actually what a very particularly funny episode. He's but, got such a good uh, voice, man. He's one of those ones I could listen to all day. He was um one of the Eternals in the Marvel movie, and he was really fun. Yeah, in that too. I have a big theory about Haja Estri I will get to at the end, but uh, yeah, I love this guy, even though he's obviously a, a huckster and a charlatan, but man, you couldn't help it. It must be what um, psychics look like, like watching a fortune teller. 
I'm a little concerned about the little boy, though. Did he actually have force powers manifesting? Because that kid is... I hope... Well, I got, I'll got. i get to my theory later about where that kid might have gone. Anyway. Uh, the he, X-Files files. You think I would have remembered that. The <laughs> X-Files files. Anyway. <laughs> I feel like it was a gimmick to make the child believe that there are future Jedi, so they pretend to give them safe passage. Like, I didn't believe that the kid was actually manifesting powers. I feel like the Jedi made them believe that so that they would leave the planet and go somewhere safe. I don't know. Like, at the at first, I thought he was just stealing the money. But then when he went back and said, just like I did for the kid i try and can get people out off for help like kind of thing so he yeah like i legitimately think that they're actually going where they think they're going but i i feel like that i don't know it was weird that about the kid i think haja is working with or for the church of the force which is what people like Laura Santeca in the sequels did. They're non-force sensitive followers of like a force like religion about the Jedi and got like guys like Chirrut and Baze from Rogue One. But I, so I think uh, he's sending them to a place of safety, kind of like kind of like Clan Flynn does and we have a force user. We help them hide. And I think that's what yeah. they're doing. It's like a Jedi under, underground railroad kind of thing. Dandelion in uh, Witcher. It's that what he was doing in the last series was getting people onto the boats to see the magic users and stuff. So kind of that thing being all like, ha ha, nobody takes me seriously. Really? I think Hodge is a totally good guy. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Right. Think and so. so they're like, you're never going to get in here. And then I have walked right in. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and he only gets his ass kicked. Cause you know, he's, he, he elbows a guy in the face and then he just kind of stands there while the other guy beats him up. Yeah, my question is, is that can he still, like, innately use the Force, kind of like somebody who's not a discovered Force user, to be slippery? Because it just seems like he can still slide in and out of places without actually cloaking or, you know, using any sort of actual Force, outward Force projection, I guess. But The other thing, speaking of being slippery and sliding in and out in crowds, Mm -hmm. maybe... Maybe wear something less Jedi-ish. Oh, I yeah. Know. Seriously, right? Right? Like like pants and a shirt? I don't know. I don't Maybe. Yeah, definitely not a cloak <laughs> in a brown. Yeah, a big brown hood. <laughs> Nothing says not Jedi like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Goes into the drug den, gets his ass kicked, you know, uses a few tricks or distractions and such. So the whole setup's revealed Kenobi's connection to Bale. So yeah, Leia was like literally just a pawn. Nobody kidnapped her because she was anything but a senator's daughter. But we know now that Reva had a master plan. I thought it was quite clever, this whole thing. You know what I liked, though? It, it When Leia, fi- Leia finds out that it's his, it's his fault and she gets mad, Mm. I think she's partly mad because she thought that maybe she was important. Right. Mm. And she figured it out really quick. And uh, this, yeah. this little actor, man, she's great. Like she really sold the, uh, the indignation and backing away. Yeah. Kinda. Yeah. And the stranger danger. Good, good job, kid. <laughs> she had all the best lines. She's like, you're a Jedi. You seem kind of old and beat up. Okay. So uh, again, Reva comes up with a cool uh, little plan. This was, this is worthy of the, uh, Flynn level antics puts a fucking bounty out over the whole city just to flush them out and just sits up on the roof and waits. We have a special guest, Raptor, well, is joining us this evening. There on was the, an uh... actual Raptor. A Raptor bounty hunter. <laughs> Couldn't believe it. So they have to disguise Leia. So gets her a little green cape and the gloves too and uh, I was like, oh, I guess Bale must have gave him some money, probably for the bus, and uh, <laughs> and then a fucking per diem. But so he buys Leia these things, and someone pointed out, I thought it was interesting that uh, Uncle Owen wouldn't let him spoil Luke on his birthday, uh, so he's spoiling Leia a little bit. Yeah. Well, the thing that I was like cranky about is like Bale, Leia's not going to know Obi Wan is. So why not mm-hmm. give him something to be like, yes, your father sent me. Here's a thing. How old are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he knows damn well how old, but he's just in awe of Padme's kid. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
she's got the cloak on he's got her dressed and he's like gonna pay and she's like looking at the gloves and she's putting them on and he's like you don't need those and then she's putting them on and then he's like okay and the and the gloves the cloak and the gloves she gets quite imperious with them at a point too she's like what now wish when she says grandfather maybe i put somewhere somehow carrie fisher is howling with laughter oh she would love this kid absolutely <laughs> I, I had this idea that if they had to do a Star Wars press tours or whatever, that probably just consist of her tickling the little lay on her lap and them getting nothing actually done. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. Uh, in this scene, I noticed something interesting. Uh, Kenobi not only uses a blaster, he shoots some motherfucker in the back. I don't think he has a choice at this point. Oh, certainly not. But it seems so weird for him to do that. Also, this poor girl, she must be really tired because if you think about it, she spends a significant portion of both episodes running. Seriously. <laughs> yeah, I have I have here a quote that she says, I'm just Leia. And it's so true to the character. And I really like that they put that in because she was so unaffected by her. Like she was aware of it and she used it like Leia throughout her life, but it was really nice that you can see that it was right at her core the entire time that she's like, I'm just Leia. Loved it when she pulled off her cousin. Oh, and she knit. <laughs> like just nailed the cousin. Just like best. Eviscerated him. It was great. <laughs> and then the, oh, you God. have to apologize to him. Like, <laughs> she's like, nope. <laughs> climbs off of like, banister or whatever instead immediately after bail gives that great speech but we will apologize and then immediately she's gone <laughs> <laughs> clearly the naboo or not the naboo the alderanian like royal guard are terrible at their jobs <laughs> right i thought alderaan had no weapons they had guns yep. i have to assume she has a reputation for this at this point <laughs> yeah yeah one guy's like i'll yeah. go up this path yeah she, <laughs> Hel uh, lightsaber helicopter death. Oh yeah, poor so, Flea gets it. And poor I Flea. noticed that when Leia falls, before she knows that she's going to be caught, um, she still doesn't scream. There's no fear. It's she just yelled out for she, Ben, but didn't scream. Yep, yep. She didn't scream in fear. She didn't cry. Like she just very, yep. Uh, that scene, I don't. I said to you the other night when we were watching. I don't think I've been as tense in a Star Wars scene as when that fucking little kid was hanging onto that wire and Obi Wan was trying to. I was like on the edge of my fucking seat. Like we know what happens. We know it's okay, but still made no difference in that moment. My thing was it was the waiting to see. Is I mean, you knew it was the only way he was going to be able to do it, but it's like he's got to use the force. He's got to. <laughs> like, it's the only way. I'm just wondering why. So Reva is like obviously ruthless. She left Haja alive. Like she could have easily just like stabbed him and went on, but she she literally was like, "You're you're not a Jedi," and she immediately just dismissed him. Yeah, I was surprised he lived. Is there still good in her then? Will we see a redemption? I don't know. Maybe. Or is he not good at all? And she's keeping him around alive for the information that he can get. Oh, I buy that. Mm -hmm. Reva's got some serious force skills. What with the force parkour and, and she can clearly get into a person's mind. Like she's got some skills. But what yeah. I'm wondering, we've always kind of played with the really, really strong force users can sense other force users. Right. Like it's always been just kind of yeah. one of those things, particularly when you use the force. Right. Mm -hmm. So I don't, A, I mean, as soon as obviously Obi-Wan did the. I had honor, that point. That, yeah. That should have been a thing. But I, then I also don't understand how could Vader be a surprise to him? He was so shut off from it until like that I moment. Guess. And he, he wasn't really accessing it just to, just to protect it was for a split second. And then the moment that he actually tapped into it and reached out at the end, that contact was made. Here's a question I have about the, the Vader thing with Kenobi is like even cut off from the force and being on Tatooine, 
uh, obviously Vader has not been idle for 10 years. He's been out kicking ass for the Empire. Like, everyone would know about the mysterious black armored Imperial Enforcer, Lord Vader, right? Like, so, like, how did Kenobi not hear of him just from going into town at least once? I'd I'd find that, that strains my credulity. I mean, this guy had all four limbs, so he was probably just out, right? I don't remember in Revenge of the Sith, does, does Kenobi actually hear the word Vader, like, associated with Anakin at all? Yeah, it's in the recordings in the temple. Um, so he does know that Anakin right. was Vader. But I mean, he may have, like, I, the way I rationalize it is that it's been 10 years. He's <clears throat> been living on Tatooine the entire time. He probably doesn't go on the holonet very often. He probably doesn't talk to too many people because he doesn't want anybody True. to get to know him. Right. He basically just lives as a hermit in the desert, keeping playing peeping Tom on a small child. (laughs) So he was kind of keeping an eye on Luke for the day that he started showing um, force ability and then he was going to train them. Was nobody watching Leia for the same thing? Did they just completely dismiss her as like, nope, she won't have it? Like In the original movies, they absolutely did. Yes. So the the wow. problem is that Leia wasn't Luke's sister until Episode Six came out. So like six years after the original movies. True. But the original, sorry, the original movie. So like they're trying to backwards fit this. Yeah. There into was some stuff that's already written. There was some mm. retro stuff happening. Okay. Merida, you you did cheer at the at the. Is he more important than her? Yeah, I was a little like like that's been my thing the whole time because. In the end, we know that they are both equally as important to all of the events that happened. And honestly, I still maintain that Leia was more important. With that being said, though, like it thought something occurred to me as Cryos was talking. We talked earlier about how he was horribly hidden and he was literally with the same family. He technically was an easier find than leia was i don't understand how that would not be the first place that vader would say to look for him there was an argument made that that would be far too painful for him to go back to tatooine because his mom died there and the time he was there yeah the but May, which he could have sent people he could have said oh absolutely people. yeah i mean obviously yeah obviously sending inquisitors there but yeah but wasn't padme like buried pregnant like that was the impression yes. that the yeah. children never actually made it to it- term <laughs> And see, this is why I think it works, right? Is because Vader doesn't know that Padme gave birth, right? So the last he saw Padme was choking her out non-consensually, um, <laughs> and she passes out still that part's pregnant. important. And she gets, like, you see her funeral procession go through Naboo. They've clearly taken, they clearly swelled her belly up for that. Yeah. So everyone thinks the kids didn't, like we're never born, right? So that's why I think it works. And as we know now, Vader found out the identity of the pilot who destroyed the first Death Star from Boba Fett in the comics. This is canon. And he said the only thing he found yeah. out was his name Skywalker. And then Vader just, the, the, the force starts cracking the glass. Yeah. I think it's just more of a, he had no reason to look. Um, I mean, and that's fair. But I feel like... <laughs> On the off chance that he works it out, maybe, I don't know, better hiding places. Just also, that. we just also said, why wouldn't Kenobi have known about Vader with the Force? Like, innately, mm-hmm. wouldn't he have, you know, wouldn't Vader have picked up on it when both of his kids were kind of getting, like, we're starting to show the Force, like... The entire f- episode four, where he's using actively using the force, is Vader just not in tune with that? Vader, well, Vader f- said he felt the presence of his old master on the Death Star. He obviously can feel Kenobi in the force, right? So. Yeah. yeah. So you can't feel your own son, though. Like he wouldn't have activated yet either. In so episode four, he did. Yeah, but, but then again, what... plot hole, plot hole, plot hole. But but I don't know if he'd have recognized it as his son. As he's chasing him down the trench, all he says is the force is strong in this one. Yeah, so it just feels he... a strong force. Yeah, I don't know. But I don't. I don't. I think 
a familial connection. I could see them not feeling that, but just that, wow, this guy's strong in the forest. Yeah. Yeah. Told I saw them and he was like, holy shit. <laughs> How about when Kenobi was talking about uh, Padme to Leia? He's like, oh, you remind me of someone. Yeah. That got me a little choked up. I have Leia is a Flynn <laughs> underneath of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have the quote, Lord Vader will be pleased, you didn't know. So that moment where Kenobi works it out. Yeah. That was a rough moment to watch. Oh, yeah. His he face. is, thou ist shooketh, is uh, what I have <laughs> written here. Why do they look down on Reva so much? I noticed that they look down on her, and I feel like it's for something specific. Yeah, the but gutter rat comment didn't really make any sense. They really look down on her, and I don't get why. Like, I feel like it's the, like, we'll never be as, like, low as what you are or something. And I'm like, what is, I, what, I, what is something, what is about her that's different from the other ones? I mean, she might be the weakest. Like, we, haven't seen, it. <laughs> we haven't seen any of them fight yet. So, like. I mean, and it's not a, a woman thing, because there are women inquisitors we've seen yeah. all over the place. Uh, I'm wondering if it's. I wonder if she was like a foundling or a youngling. Situation. Perhaps the gutter is the Jedi temple, but a lot of, but all the inquisitors would have uh, like, they would have had to have been Jedi at one point or, or they'd still be very young. Had really ones, yeah. yeah. Like they'd be Leia's age right now. If they were um, like babies, right. Yeah. When they found them. Yeah. I have a feeling we'll get that answered. What I want to know is how the hell Reva, I mean, knows about Anakin being Darth Vader. Cause I, that's probably something like, three people in the fucking galaxy yeah, know that, right that, that seems to be the big major complaint online is that how the hell does reva know that anakin is darth vader well neckbeards if you watch the next four episodes maybe we'll find out i mean my um, i'm just i'm betting is that she was a padawan she knew who anakin was and like that's where we're going to see flashback with the hayden christensen I well you. that's the thing i think if she was a youngling and she met Anakin in her in her training and, and stuff, and she then met Vader. I would think that she would be able to tell they're the same person. It's also possible that she is friendly enough with Vader that maybe he said something. Yeah. Maybe you never know. I mean, we're still only. I mean, by the time we get to classic Vader, he's it's been twenty years, so. But maybe he's still in that. He's still fucked up, you know. And t he ended up talking about Padme to somebody. It'd be a hard, hard sell for me, but uh, you never know. Or maybe she's just obsessed. Like she's she mentioned being in the archives. Maybe she put it together with detective work because she yeah. is she is she is looking for Kenobi. She was she's probably looking for retribution and blames Kenobi for. Order 66. I, mean, I don't know, but it could be another whole Kylo Ren thing, you know, the whole yeah. like obsessed with Vader. I think she just wants to curry favor. I think yeah. she's just trying to I think she learned something in the archives, like found that clip of Anakin being knighted as Lord Vader. Oh, I bet you're right. And and wants and is now just trying to curry favor by tracking mm. down everyone. Because if you think about it, right, after the 501st and Anakin sacked the temple, Sidious would have had access to everything that was there, right? And I know Jocasta deals the holocron with the names of all the Force-sensitive kids um, and then dies. And I know there's other holocrons of all the Force-sensitive kids from Jedi Fallen Order, but it probably would not have been super hard for Palpatine to be able to keep tabs on who is or is not dead. Right. Because, like, the clones would have reported the deaths of all their Jedi generals, uh, mm -hmm. and then they would have been able to ID all the bodies from the temple. And then from there, it's a list of whoever's left and whoever the, uh, the Inquisitors bring in. So Reva kills the Grand Inquisitor, so uh, obviously she's, uh, no, she, she can't be the weakest of them. She can't kill the Grand Inquisitor because he has to show up in Rebels in five years. So I'm very curious how they're going to spin that off. Terrible wound? I mean, I mean, hey, getting stabbed through the gut is clearly not as lethal as it is in real life because, uh, let's see here, Fennec gets stabbed in the gut and lives, or shot in the gut and lives. So lightsabers are nice clean wounds, cauterized. It's true. <laughs> so, 
Really, their weapons are much more like thoughtful to their healing process than guns are. I I I think the whole point of that was just to take the Grand Inquisitor out of the hunt. Because mm. he obviously seems to be the one that's getting in her way all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I was getting annoyed with him, and that's what I meant is that I was really rooting mm. for her to just be like, yeah, get him out of the way. And you're like, wait. No, that's bad. You <laughs> need on. to be kept in check. Yeah, wait, hmm. Where, what side am I on again? <laughs> okay, so with only four episodes left, there's only a six episode run. Uh, what now? Having seen the first two episodes, what's everybody's predictions for uh, things that will happen by the end of the season? So I'm hoping episode three buttons up the Leia thing, and then it goes on to something else because Disney now seems to have this cant of adult and child paired up together, right? Mando and Grogu, uh, Rex, or not Rex, um, Omega and Hunter slash the rest of the Bad Batch, and now we have Obi-Wan and Leia. I would prefer we do three episodes of a Obi-Wan Leia thing, and then three episodes of a Obi-Wan has to save Luke from something. Like a balance perspective. I think you're on the money there. I don't think we are going to get um, Luke in peril. I just don't. I think that I think we're going to get to see more character development for Obi-Wan than anything else. I mean, it is his show. He's in the title, right? So I think we will see some Leia, and I, but I think it won't go past probably two episodes. And then I think we'll see some development about his relationship with Vader and some more of that stuff. And then we might, might get some Luke at the end. I'm thinking less Luke. Probably right at the end, it's going to be him coming back and settling right back into where he is, um, to where he is when we do see him um, in another six to ten years or whatever. Um, I feel like the last three episodes are going to be Reva, Kenobi, and Vader. I feel like that's going to be the triangle that we're going to see. I think it's going to be really focusing on Reva because we haven't really done a lot of development with her yet but I feel like she's going to have her moment because they're building her up a lot. I wouldn't be surprised if honestly, because everything's kind of sorted out with Leia now. So I wouldn't be surprised if it, we even opened with a backstory of everything from Reva's perspective. Um, I do have, I do have a note about the outro, like the credits. Mm -hmm. It's a classic Star Wars outro rather than a dynamic arts one that we've been seeing. Like usually we see the concept art, through the credits at the end of the Star Wars episodes. Oh, you're right. That was, right. That, was that was missing this time. So I guess the question is, which one do we prefer? Oh, definitely the artwork. Art, the mm. art's definitely better. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, I, I missed that. I didn't even notice it. And now I miss it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> For myself, I think uh, I do think the Leia thing will wrap up uh, by the end of the next episode. They're going to go to Marzupol or wherever Haja sent them to. So I think we'll find. Uh, hopefully uh, the Church of the Forest or something similar, like an underground railroad type thing. And then I think uh, Leia will go back to Alderaan, but I don't think Kenobi will go back to Tatooine probably till the end of the series. He's going to be somehow dealing with the Inquisitors right on him and, and eventually... I, I don't think he and Vader can meet, though. I think that would really cheapen the uh, meeting in Episode Four. I think they'll come goddamn close, but Reva's going to be... Vader's going to be always the menace in the background, but I don't think he'll get that close to Kenobi. Um, do you, do you think because... they'll communicate to with each other, kind of like how they did in seven, eight, nine? If they come near each other, I don't, uh, I don't think any words are going to be exchanged. It might be a situation kind of like the end of Rogue One, where he's, you know, it's all action and got to escape. But they, I don't think they're going to speak until Episode Four. That's that's my guess. Um, I do think, I think we're going to see Qui Gon Jinn at some point, if not Liam Neeson. He's going to be, if, if we don't actually have Liam Neeson, he is, it's going to be heavily implied. Um, I think it's going to be, we're going to hear Qui-Gon Jinn. I'd settle for that. Force ghost. I think, I think, I think, I think, I think. No, see, mm. the, the problem is that Qui-Gon never learned how to force ghost. That's the thing. You don't know what they teach in the afterlife. Well, you because Yoda specifically said at the beginning, good. You have things to learn. I'm going to teach you how to talk to your old Jedi Master. Yeah, like, that's true. like that was that's where it was kind of left. So then it's ten years of him doing what? 
nothing but honing. Nothing but honing, but he hasn't really, he's, he, so he knows it, but he hasn't practiced it because he turned from the force. Right. But now he's yeah. going to try and do that. So I, I think we might end up seeing him or at least hearing him if he's not strong enough to manifest his. If we get to see Liam Neeson, we're going to go nuts. We're going to fucking love it. Face yeah. taken. If we do get uh, a closer up portrayal of Luke um, and we get to hear him do speaking uh, lines and stuff, uh, I'm wondering if they'll have, uh, they'll show like Leia's obviously, she's got so much promise and she's so clever. I wonder if they'll show like Luke's just a complete 10 year old slacker going to Tashi Station with a young fixer and Cammy and maybe Biggs. Like that, that'd be cool. And we just see like, ah, this little shit, you know, he's supposed to save the galaxy kind of thing. Like I could see them portrayed him kind of like that. Just a yeah. typical 10 year old kid. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that'd, that'd be totally good. Cool. It would make sense too. Um, and my last real prediction is uh, by the time this season completes, uh, Obi-Wan will be more at peace with himself than he is now, obviously. But I think that I think his hair is going to be white by the end of this. Ooh, probably. They've, well, they've got to get they've got to get him to where he is in Rebels, right? Exactly. Is carrying his saber around, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, maybe you know what? Maybe next episode, the news of Anakin Invader, that's what turned his hair white, and he'll be on the freighter or lay. Like, what happened to your hair? You look even older. Now, I do like how, uh, because it's only 10 years after the purge, people still kind of know what Jedi are, whereas you get to episode four, Jedi take on a much more mythical uh, legend type, type uh, thing. Yeah. My last note on my page here is fucking move over, Grogu. New adventures and uh, new adventures and babysitting with Princess Sassy Pants. Yeah, this one can talk back. That's the <laughs> difference. Just as I was finishing editing this episode, Ewan McGregor put out a message to the fans today commenting on the utterly vile racist bullshit Moses Ingram, who plays Reva, has been receiving online. It happened with Rose from the sequel movies and Ray, just super shitty racist and sexist crap, and Ewan's message holds true. If this is the kind of thing you engage in, you are no Star Wars fan, and you are all well deserving of a big Carrie Fisher middle finger. So don't be a dick, be excellent to each other. Until next week, my friends, with more Kenobi to discuss. I quite forgot new episodes are Wednesdays, so time to get right back to work. Enjoy, and see you soon. Vinzer Flynn, signing off. Mm-hmm.